honorable and perfectly self-enlightened worshippers Buddha, consummated in knowledge and behavior. Hello to you friends, this is Dhamma on Air number 134, the fourth in a series of Dhamma conversations with Venerable Dhamma Gavesi on all aspects of the Dhamma here under the Four Noble Truth and the Noble Eightfold Way. And you are indeed welcome. Thank you for your attention. Friends, the Four Noble Truth, Chachari, Arya Sachani, which is the very core of Buddhism, are one. All this and such is suffering, dukkha, true, craving, is the cause of all suffering, dukkha samudaya. Three, absence of all craving is the end of all suffering, dukkha niroda. Four, the noble eightfold way leads to the end of all suffering, dukkha niroda kamni patibhada. The noble eightfold way leading to nibbana is simply this. Right view, samaditi. Right motivation, samasankapa. Right speech, samaraja. Right action, samakamanda. Right livelihood, samarajiva. Right effort, samarajama. Right awareness, samasati. And right concentration, samasamadi. But what is Right livelihood. What is this critical right livelihood? The fivefold definition of right livelihood is 1. Earning a living not involving any trading with living beings. 2. Earning a living not involving any selling of meat, fish, or flesh. 3. Earning a living not involving any selling of any form of weapons. 4. Earning a living not involving any dealing with alcohol or illegal drugs. 5. Earning a living not involving any selling of any form of poison. That is right livelihood. The characterization of right livelihood for lay people is as follows. Any livelihood that neither involves any killing, injuring, harming, nor any forced imprisoning of any living being, nor stealing, taking what is not giving, cheating, any bribery or corruption or lying or false deceiving, tricks or for use of false measures or weights, neither any sensual nor any sexual abuse, neither the use of selling of alcohol nor of intoxicating illegal drugs that causes carelessness, neither by oneself, nor by getting, nor inciting others, employees, to do so. Such is right livelihood. And right livelihood for Buddhist monks and nuns, the monastic Sangha, is neither living by receiving food by astrology, soothsaying, prediction of future events, nor by palmistry, Geomancy, dream reading, charms or spells, amulets or fake divination, nor by any rituals, running errands or messages, political flatter, arranging marriages, funerals or divorces, nor by medical practice, nor by producing art, poetry, or in professional disputation or debate. That is right livelihood. For further study on Buddhist right livelihood, Sama Ajivo, go to whatbuddhasit.net and search for what is right livelihood. This is why now when they, this, this country wants to talk about the word dukkha with the word exhaustion. If you start something like this, mm. if you start something, whatever that you start mm. right, is what is present. Mm. So what is present and started? always increases its time towards the end, hmm. to a known end. So when that happens, impermanence happens, as in increase of this causes aging. 
only the increase. Increase of this causes aging, causes decay, causes a change, causes disintegration. Hmm. With this, not only is this impermanent, the impermanence is also beyond now, where whatever that is to end, now this time is decreasing. So constantly one day, our life, this is increasing in Dim birthdays, yeah. and this bit is decreasing. Diminishing. Diminishing. Yeah. Yeah. So this diminishing, decreasing factor one day is what we are even more exhausted because this is where we invest into. Hmm. So our savings, our insurances, all the assurances we want one day are thrown beyond today to tomorrow, not knowing what this tomorrow is. And we do not know how to calculate what we have for the duration that we need it, because that uncertainty of duration. This Baba Tanha Bhante is what's causing many a person to be so exhausted mm. with. So in the present, up to the present moment, there is Kama Tanha, causing fun, 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 fun to spend time with. And this is invested to lengthen this fearful, doubtful nature. Mm. Right? So when this explanation is, is looked into further, of beginnings and endings, with durations in between. S sorry to uh, interrupt you, Brenda, but we just, I just have to be sure that we are actually running. And we are actually running. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this simplicity one day when taken, right? Then you begin to see that the future that hasn't happened, hasn't happened. Okay? Hmm. So we have a plan that's drawn up for the future. But it is hmm. only done in the past and, and it's just there hmm. to execute or not. The, the, the fearfulness, Bhante, is that if this Bhante says something now, right? I say it momentarily, what I say has become what I said. Hmm. I do something momentarily, what I do has become what I did. It's frozen. Not only frozen, Bhante, hmm. it just seems to have a character that it just gets accumulated into a past without you doing anything. Hmm. Right? However, you can say to some extent also, uh, whatever you uh, whatever you say, you do, you think, as a moment it has been done, then it will affect the future also, huh? It's your karmic trace, that, basically. That 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 that, that effectness one day of Vipaka comes only because of this natural accumulation of a past. Mm -hmm. So this natural accumulation of the past with the eye, with the ear, with the faculties in that way, right? With certain transactions, the way you associate role. They get combined in the past in whatever the karmic nature and then gets offered because you can retrieve that past. Hmm. So that past is not something that just gets accumulated and forgotten. It is naturally available, knowingly or unknowingly, voluntarily or involuntarily, to be uh, uh, expressed, recollected ah. and expressed ah. as, as a vipaka. Yeah, sure. So this exhaustion, Bhante, naturally that this past is accumulating is something that we don't even talk about but constantly we are remembered of the past mm. and that exhaustion is what this duk this one part of this dukkha is mm. so trying to deal with this aging with what is going on mm. trying to deal with the investment of this unknown future mm. is about mm. this natural phenomena where the past is accumulating that can be retrieved or gets retrieved into making up a future for me. Hmm. These are things that we don't talk with part of Dukkha. Hmm. Right? So, for whatever that has begun, Bhante, hmm. right? the naturality is that we have to spend, spend time, spend energy, spend effort, spend knowledge, right? Spend, 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 spend money, whatever the word spend takes to exist in the present moment. Hmm. So, if you only take the word spend, S-P-E-N-D, spend, is life all about a spending? And actually it is, yes. Yes, true, right? true. So, this spending is what the Buddha tries to explain to us, that it is exhausting. Hmm. That causes us unsatisfactoriness, it causes us suffering, it causes us displeasure, it causes us discontentment, fear, fear, doubt, worries, all, all these things that get get accumulated as part of this spending mm. is what this dukkha is about, mm. this exhaustion mm. is about. Mm. Okay, so with this dukkha, now that we have to spend, right? You also talk about from beginning to end. While spending, we also have to wait for this 
uncertainty of death. Hmm. Uncertainty. Don't know when it's going to happen. Hmm. But it's going to happen. Hmm. So we try to kill it by investing into something. And we talk about the investment and not death. Hmm. We don't like to talk about death. No. In the future. no. <laughs> but we like to talk about, I have this invested here. I have this guarantee. I have this warranty. Hmm. Yeah? Assuring yourself that the future is rosy. Hmm. Yeah? Hmm. False phenomena, but that's a convention that does this. A social convention. Yeah. So now, with this one what happens is that naturally, we spoke last time about being fed up. Hmm. We very quickly get fed up. And because of this nature of fed, being fed up, we seem to have boredom in us. Hmm. Very quickly, we want the next thing to happen. Hmm. We want the next thing to happen. A new thing, yeah. more intense, more colorful, so, more interesting. Right. So yeah. with the faculties, with the eye, we want color, we want shape, we want something to change. Hmm. With the ear, we want sound to change in frequency. Hmm. With the nose, with the smell, with the mouth, to say something or to in, to take nourishment in. And we want variety with it. Hmm. With the body, we want movement and we want pleasure. Hmm. So in that way, one day we are constantly seeking, seeking variety and abundance of this variety. Hmm. And at a frequency, depending on the circumstances, change at a, at a frequent way. Hmm. I think from for me it has been uh, to see that it's for variety. Let's say, for example, the whole plan is seeking variety. This is to say uh, it can't be satiated. It can one you, one time you can't be satisfied, but actually the more variety you get, you, the quicker you will get you become bored. The quicker you tie up, huh? Ah. So the more you have to invest. <laughs> so, but you, you, you you just touched the point. Greater the variety, greater the demand yeah. for the variety, and more you demand the variety, but take greater the tiredness or the exhaustion mm. of variety. Mm. So, craving craving starts. Huh? So, Bhante, when this word tanha of whatever we identify as craving or temptation or desire or greed as this thing. Mm. This is driven Bhante because of the naturality that this faculty is and this self is seeking, seeking this variety, mm. seeking a solution to boredom. Mm. Right? Mm. So craving that we have is just another way that we have thought that it is the solution for mm. the tanha. Not discovering that now we are feeding tanha. Exactly. It's growing, craving is growing exponentially. Huh? Yes. The more variety you have, the more craving you get. Exactly. And th therefore, of course, the dissatisfaction on the other end of finding that is not the final solution. Huh? Yeah. Uh, you could say, actually, uh, one biologist, he, he would say, uh, that if you, let's say you got satisfied with only one time sex or one time feeding yeah then evolution biological evolution will stop so because people will sit and smile the animals will sit and smile they'll never do anything else they will not propagate they will, yeah. they will be basically die from starvation huh? so, so it's in, imminent also in the biological sense that we are seeking all the time that it, it's insatiable it cannot be satisfied ever 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 yeah. huh? so, but, yeah. The, 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 the phenomena that gata that says imas means sati idama hoti. If this is present, it says that this is also present. Mm. You can't make one side and not have the other side. So this is why in the Dhamma Chakka Pantana Sutta, the Buddha talks about dwe me bikkave anta pabbajitenana sevitamba. That all beings, moment they appear or become born, then have to start dealing with this two-sided world. In what way two-sided? Yeah, and, and that is what he then says, yeah. what yeah. are these two sides? So he yeah. says, trying to choose one side presenter than the other side. Yeah. This is the two things that you have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it doesn't matter whether this side or that side, but yeah. you now have to decide the selection, which side to select, which side to choose. Uh, but you get both anyway. You you, you get both. Uh, but the naturality is you can use only one side. Uh, so uh, we can only use one side to wear on the front. Uh, then the other side gets hidden. Uh, yeah. Uh, so if you take life, life is all about having to choose with your eye, having to choose with your ear, like this with your faculties. That is a constant choice that's presented to us. And it's, we are not told that it is a choice. But naturally, that is what is there to do or not to do. 
to take or not to take. To begin or not to begin. Exactly one thing. Mm. Right? Mm. Mm. So, so when the Buddha talks about the, in the Dhamma Chakra Pavatana Sutta that, that these two things are what the problem people face, the core problem. Mm. And the problem is to choose pleasant to unpleasant. He says, don't follow this 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 naturality, but to come to Majjima Patipada. Yeah? The middle way. The translation is middle way. Mm. But in that middle way, Bhante, when he talks to saying that come to these eight faculty these eight factors or, or these eight elements to deal with, in there Bhante, interestingly, you it, it categorizes into Sila Samadhi Panya. Mm. If you take the, we just have to say, sila means morality or ethics, uh, samadhi means concentration or focus or absorption, and panya will mean understanding or in the ultimate sense, wisdom. Yeah, so again, the, 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 the skill, the, the, the what you call sila, mm -hmm. not only is there, is that morality one day. What we should do is to take ourselves further backwards and talk about the nature of the word skillfulness. Hmm, advantageousness. Yeah. Yeah. So we should be skillful to understand what co constitutes sila in, mm. the, in the explanation of mm. people. So with speech, mm. with speech, he says musavada veramani. Not to. Musavacha veramani. Uh. So he says abstain from speaking, speaking lies. Abstain, abstain from using empty words. Abstain, abstain from harsh words. Abstain from slanderousness. Yeah, Divisive speech. Yeah. But Manti, what has happened is that we have taken the face value of these explanations of lies and everything. Yeah. But first of all, you should take it in the context of that. If two-sided naturality is what's existing, hmm. and the Buddha says that don't make either one of these pleasant or unpleasant as a choice, get back to middle path yeah? and in the speech what you should do is to exercise or be skillful with the exercising of abstinences. Hmm. So if you look at yourself one day, from the day we were born, we are subject to a two things, kill or not to kill, steal or not to steal, behave or not to behave, lie or not to lie intoxicate or not to intoxicate we are just there are in-betweens but this this is just the base two things we have mm -hmm. so if the middle path or the eightfold path says that with our speech we have these four areas that we should abstain from one day don't you think that moment you promise yourself that thou shall not lie thou shall not use empty words, that thou shall not use harsh words, that thou shall not slander another person. What would happen to your choice, Bhante? Yes, there would be only be one, one choice. Right. Hmm. So, if the Buddha in the Eightfold Path is saying that there is only one Ekhaino and Magu, there is only this solution. Hmm. And this solution is to abstain skillfulness with abstinences mm. because that's the only way to kill your choice mm. there's no other mechanism to kill your mm. choice when this Pante reads many uh, literature that we have today mm. and this Pante has listened to many of the talks that's been given by many of our scholars or teachers one of the things that gets missed out Pante, is this word choice this word choose is there but choice is not there. As in, if you or I go to a shop, we are naturally presented with a choice to choose from. Hmm. Many choices uh, usually, huh? So, choice, the, 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 the phenomena is choice to choose from. So, life is all about a task to create a choice and choose from that choice. Hmm. And that's what this this uh, conventional world is about. Mm. Go work, earn, create a choice so you can be choosing from it. Mm. To eat, to look, to you know, have fun with, to dress. What do you mean by creating a choice? You mean creating a freedom to choose? Uh, Bante, uh. freedom, freedom uh. with choice. Uh. Freedom 
uh, of choice freedom to choose all these phenomena are something that we each person in their own desire craving and circumstances are occupied with hmm right true so just understand this with the five precepts if the five precepts are a natural choice we have okay hmm once we have taken the precept taken the promise to abstain from abstain with we accepted the training rule yeah yeah, yeah. so moment you do that bhante you lose the choice you yeah. lose the freedom with the choice yeah. and you lose the choice in a way hmm and you only have this chosen element that you are hmm. you have it. but still you can say uh, i think it's is a value to say i have two comments one thing one thing is you say that there is this either pleasure or pain regarding any choice and uh, there one could see the 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 ethics could come in naturally in the sense that if you if you speak a lie then you don't feel good about it you don't feel pleasure about it huh? yeah. but if you take a skillful choice then you do feel pleasure about it yeah. and same thing also with killing and with uh, all the other so so the, we have an inner inner compass if we feel harmony with, by a given choice then it's usually a correct choice huh? On the other hand I think out of compassion for beings it's important to say uh, what actually is wrong speech are uh, it is lying it is scolding it is um, divisive speech slandering and it's empty speech I think it has some value but I also think it I I take your point is well taken you have two choices if you take away one choice then you're safe yeah. automatically huh exactly. automatically so because beyond that you have to start applying what you just spoke about as in taking each one of those elements in there and then understanding the dangers of lying yeah the consequences of lying hmm. okay the shamefulnesses and the guilt associated with lies hmm. okay and how each person justifies to lie hmm. okay hmm. so when they justify bante at the time it's a beneficial thing for them to lie hmm. to hmm. protect themselves in a way hmm. of or others whatever, yeah. whatever yeah. the circumstances that they have yeah. but it's only after that Yeah. That, that guilt and the regretment and then begin to come yeah. right yeah. so these are further step uh, elements have, that has to be investigated in that way mm. but what this bunty wants to talk about is a phenomena because in the singhala language mm. in the singhala language this word of choice is not something that is available in the spoken language ah interesting yeah. in the spoken language uh there is no one word that explains the word in the context of a multiplicity of things to choose from hmm no hmm so therefore when somebody who may know singhala or pali when they try to explain this they may not use words where the english language may drag this word of choice into this whole scenario ah okay because of uh because of uh, etymological cultural reasons uh, the choice is not there the lang- the language that doesn't bring this element of ah. choice to choose from with any any word that that can no. be used to translate back ah. again as to this the simplicity of you know a choice to choose from ah, yeah, yeah yeah so when this pante goes back to his past as a lay person and looks back as what he explained of his exhaustion right he begins to say that trying you know if this one they had said that he was exhausted exhausted trying to spend spend what he had you said that last time i remember yeah, yeah. so having to spend what i had what i earned and then trying to work out how much of variety the rate of offering variety of this exhaustion now when they you begin to see what this whole thing has been about next thing is that when the buddha explains of this naturality of karma is karma so called karma yoga this naturality of pleasurable option he uses five other words he know that it always has the subjective nature from beginning to end it diminishes hmm he then says gammo yeah about a word that everybody does it hojuttaniko anariyo anatta sanghito in this way he tries to explain what this means 
when this Pante looks back at his past, he sees Pante that practically every transaction that he was involved in was associated with a choice. And in that choice, Pante, there was a natural comparison with certain situations or certain people. Hmm. I would compare what they have or what they are doing. Uh, which car, uh, which living place, which address, yeah. uh, which education, right. uh, which height, yeah. uh, which looks good or not, to uh, which job. All of life. Uh, yeah. Whether When it comes to work, yeah. it is some different group of people that I compare. Yeah. If, if it is a bring, bring up a child, it's a different group of family and other people that you compare. Yeah. Right? It's with material things. It, it just you choose whom you want to be compared with. Mm, mm. You don't announce this. No, no, no. It's no. a very secretive personal thing. Yeah. But it happens all the time automatically. Exactly. But Measuring up uh, oneself against others. Right. Huh? Huh? So, now, if this natural nature to compare with is present in us, how exhausting is it? to continue to compare with. Yes. <laughs> and in this comparison, Bhante, we naturally also compete. Yeah, yeah it's true. Yeah. That I felt, as a, when I went forth, uh, then I felt it as a great relief to say, ah, what are you comparing? There is no I, there is no ego to compare in the first place. So what people t talked about me taking this crazy decision to become a Buddhist monk and sitting on a mountain for 16 years, well, then... Uh, I was almost uh, happy about that they found it crazy yeah, huh? yeah. because then uh, yes but uh, I'm I'm beyond that comparing I'm stopped comparing uh, so if you think there's something to compare then you can compare but I I don't compare anymore so <laughs> there, cool. there's no another note I have to use uh, because I think it's a good point so there's this freedom of choice and uh, I think this is coupled up with the ethics and the karma. Yeah. Uh, because the, the way karma works often is like this, and uh, it's not so much spoken about. Let's say you, you transgress the Dhamma and you, you lie or you come to steal or you come to pretend or whatever. Then uh, the effect is usually that your freedom of choice goes down. Right. Uh -huh. So your diversity goes down. Huh? So you have less less options on the shelf to take down from. And that is felt also as exhaustion or suffering or dukkha or whatever we call it. Huh? It's dissatisfaction that you cannot get what you want and you will, you will get more of what you don't want. Huh? Right. Uh, and this is basically, uh, one doesn't realize that, that this is already planted in the past by one's choices. Huh? <laughs> what to see, what to think, uh, what to do. Huh? But this... The whole, the whole key to getting a hold on that is this awareness. Usually you are not aware of it. You're yeah. not aware of what you're thinking. You're not aware of what you're saying. You're not aware of what you're doing, whether it's advantageous kusala or it is disadvantageous akusala. Huh? Yeah. But uh, while doing it, whether good or bad, uh, you, you will either expand your freedom of choice in the future or you will contract it. Huh? Yeah. Whether you know it or not, it, it, it is like it's, that. It's huh? natural. It, there are the dials you have to deal with. And we all think, Pante, that creating a choice to choose from is the solution mm. to this problem that we are facing. Mm. And now, Pante, to go back to understand what this problem is, right? This nature of constantly feeling fed up, this nature of feeling dull, this nature of bland nature. Mm. Yeah? monotonousness, hmm. yeah? uh, this boredom hmm. that we come up with. In this way, there is so much of these words that Sokha Parideva, these two words, explain. Hmm. They become lonely so very quickly. Hmm. True, true, and true, true. we do not know how to explain what we are experiencing. Though we categorize it to saying, oh, we are bored, hmm. I'm lonely. Hmm. But I don't know why, I don't know how. Hmm. But the solution in the conventional world is to throw further fun with a choice. Hmm. Yeah, further excitement with a choice. Uh, trying to push away the loneliness and the boredom, huh? So, so, so pull it some stimulation, sense stimulation in there, some circus, some uh, money spending or whatever, some some entertainment. Then it's, it doesn't. It's felt as less. Less boredom, less dukkha, less suffering. So but actually, it becomes greater. <laughs> it becomes greater, greater, greater because of addiction. Huh? Yeah. So, so the, the conventional world, right? It's about 
increasing this variety hmm. and thinking that that is a solution that is there hmm. when in the eightfold path and when you go to mindfulness i the buddha very quickly explains that this visuddhi sattana visuddhiya in this purification is to go beyond soka paridev to go to remove dukkha domanas hmm. to to increase the jnanas adhigamaya nibbana satchikiriyaya satipattana is the only answer he says mindfulness is the only answer hmm. so when you now go to implement the eightfold path one day and look back whether we have approached it in the right manner hmm. right whether we are trying to tackle the right problem that is there hmm. then something comes from what is conventionally available as a teaching and what is presented today in our own way hmm. again when they really go back looking back at the concentration sama samadhi hmm. the first dhyana as a very interesting two lines one day saying vivicheva kame this word vivicche in pali hmm. is about the variety hmm. variety of kamas hmm. vivicha akusale variety of unwholesomenesses uh, but you could also say it's secluded from huh or it's apart from but the other two words bring that yeah yeah savitakkam savicharat the uh. one who finds the seclusion from these two problems hmm. of kama vivit variety of kama hmm. and variety of akusala sense What's desire ha huh? kama yes pante yeah yeah sense sense pressurization or yeah. sense desire with the unwholesomeness being hmm. one who finds a solution to it hmm. will naturally have these three things of viveka piti so the uh, uh, seclusion three, yeah the, the 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 naturality where your mind has some free time which is secluded uh, hmm. or the seclusion or isolation or hmm. or thing hmm. piti prasanna so hmm. uh, happiness But pleasant as with Zuka. Hmm. So, PT, I will usually say joy, joy. Or, or rapture, but I think joy is the best uh, joy, thing because that's what it is. Right. <laughs> so, now, so Dhamma PT or the PT associated Pante is is what you're talking about. So, to accomplish this first concentration, hmm. one has to be adequately precepted, hmm. reducing the choice that causes this karma, this pressurization. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. So it's not about going to a retreat and sitting down in. in no, 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 yeah. no, no. It no. is about the mental circumstances that sort something out, and in that nature, longer you deal with it and sustain it, now you get the first. So you can say there's, as I see the classical is to say there's kaya viveka that's been secluded from circumstances. Yeah. Of course, you can meditate uh, in in a in a factory where there's full of people and workers, but it is more easier in these circumstances. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. So we are, we are we physically withdraw, but then chitta viveka, which you speak about, huh, is something something completely internal, huh? Uh, secluded from sense pleasures, from thinking what it's in the fridge and uh, what film you should see next, and so on. Yeah. However, I just like to make one note before I forget it. Uh, so, uh, usually we say we are creating this uh, freedom of choice, and this is a whole uh, ball game in conventional life: is to have a, as a large freedom of choice we can. And we don't, we have not that realized that it's a karmic thing. Actually, it is uh, the freedom of choice is created by our good actions in the past, huh? and uh, it's it's abrogated by our bad actions in the past. Let's take the extreme example of the Buddha. For example, they have uh, extreme choices. Huh? They have three uh, three palaces. Uh, they have a lot of uh, musicians and so on. They they have extreme good karmic accumulation. But what do they choose? They choose nothing. Huh? So you can say that's an interesting thing when you actually see those beings who have maximized it completely and they are on the path, of course, and are going for withdrawal. Then they don't choose. They they choose to say no. They 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 reject all these choices. Huh? Uh, probably because of their their upstream, they have already chosen chosen them many times. But they see this lure, this that it's a hook. That if you start to choose from it, then it's an endless choice. You have to pick up the first one, first lady, next lady, uh, first dollar, next dollar, first car, next car. Huh? So they choose this seclusion to to go out, to go to to leave the house, like we also have chosen. Huh? Out of having a considerable number of choices, so I think this is an interesting discrimination between the worldling that uh, will uh, indulge, uh, take a jump in this diversity. F- for example, there can be a, a collection of cars, huh? not only one car. Who needs a hundred cars? But there's some many people who have a hundred cars. Huh? They they fall in love with this uh, choice. 
And then the, the opposite, is also you can say uh, people who have overweight, they will choose extreme amounts of, of uh, something to put in their mouth. Huh? Uh, they don't need to, but they, they still they cannot stop choosing from whatever is in the bakery or whatever. Huh? But the, the way of the Dhamma is, even though there is an extreme, at that particular level of the path, there is an extreme amount of choices to choose from, from this uh, in the case of the Samasam Buddha's perfect karmic manipulation, but they say no to all of it. Huh? Exactly. They say no to all of it. I think that there is, they have discovered this first noble truth that this uh, extreme freedom of choice, this also is dukkha. Yeah. This also is exhaustion yeah. or exhausting. Yeah. <laughs> and this also is suffering. This also is dissatisfaction. However colorful it is and however diverse or magnif magnificent it is, they see, ah, okay, this is also dukkha. If, this will also lead to boredom. Yeah. So, that, 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 the word boredom, mante, dullness, is nothing other than exhaustion. Hmm. Mental exhaustion in certain elements. Some are physical exhaustion, some are both physical and mental exhaustion. Hmm. Hmm. Because you remember it in that way. Also, mante, when we identify this word extreme, right? So, you, you, you mentioned the fact that the Buddha has, you know, three palaces. Uh, uh, did he work, earn and buy it or did he inherit it? He inherited Yeah. So, now that he inherited and it is his to use, is that extreme? No. Now, some people may work, earn and buy the tree uh. and, and, and be in debt. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. So, so, but the, the circumstances of identifying an extreme is a, a discussion on its own as hmm. to how one, what becomes an extreme in a way. Hmm. Hmm. If I have, if this Bhante had something, with what I have, I look at other people and now I say, oh, that is not the best investment you should have made. You've gone into uh, extreme. Excess. Excessive ex uh, extreme. Yeah? Uh, yeah. So in that way, our judgment, in a way, is dependent on what we reference it with, what hmm. we have or what we know to have. Hmm, ourselves, exactly. basically. Uh. So, in a way, Bhante, at times we get distracted by this word extreme but actually if you st stop and and put this word into context whatever extremes in this universe are always subjected to having two sides two ends which also become two extremes so now we do not know whether we are participating in two sides two ends or two extremes Hmm. Because it is judgmental by what's going on. I would say it's relative because in his case, and I would say for most rich people, uh, what they find uh, what they find ordinary, uh, poor people will find extreme. They will find it in excess. Exactly. Huh? Huh? So, <laughs> but you can say, uh, uh, and what the, the rich people find simple or maybe even primitive, uh, this the poor people find uh, exquisite. <laughs> huh? So, so uh, the pleasure and pain is. And whether you f you are satisfied with a given object, it can b by no means be be directly uh, said to be in a consequence whether it's extreme or not. Huh? It's what you have adapted to. Huh? So uh, at the moment, however, the the poor man, if he starts to get rich, then he will also get the same. He habituated to the same objects. Huh? He he finds a, a nice car extreme in the start, but he doesn't find it extreme when he become rich himself. Huh? Then it's banal. Then it's, uh, he become bored with the two. Uh, uh. So I think this is a, a proof of the pudding that it's not a question of accumulating material goods or for that you can say mental states, uh, satisfied mental states. The basic thing is that it's impossible <laughs> to satisfy. You can never come to the last drop and say, ah, now, now I don't need more. Yeah. Now I will never be bored. Yeah. Now I'm fully satisfied. Now I'm happy forever. Right. It is a physical impossible. And that is suffering. Right. That is why the Buddha says it's suffering. Huh? Right. It's impossible to satisfy this right. need, so, this craving. So with that statement that it is not possible at all, the conventional world that we used to live in hmm. and the poor con conventional people that are caught still in this way. Yes. There are social accepted solutions to all things that are going on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because everybody has to wait from beginning to end. So it doesn't matter if it's a one-year-old one child, a 10-year-old child, a 20-year-old person, or a 30, or a 70, or a 90, doesn't matter who it is. They have to spend time 
in 24 hour cycles of with daylight and darkness they have to understand how to spend their time so society but they depending on the groups of the, the social structure children have to go to kindergarten or daycare center other children have to go to school other people have to go to work you have to go to university and there are these socially accepted structures that we go through hmm hmm thinking that they are the best solution to overcoming this boredom the dullness the loneliness hmm. yeah so if somebody is lonely the only solution the society seems to want to impose or impose is go find a companion yeah yeah <laughs> right and this companion <laughs> must have this role and by the way when you find the companion if it has to be a friend oh then you take up a role of a friend and you using that role of a friend you own the other person as my friend yeah and by the way get that person also to own you as their friend yeah so yeah so there is this two way ownership and that ownership causes us to then occupy ourselves in duty in role play mm. and then kill some time mm mm yeah mm. so now depending on the time we have depending on the circumstances of my lonelinesses i now choose what sort of a partner i want how intimate i want to be with the partner mm. and i create a role take a role and then i role play with it mm. and society feels greater the roles more occupied you are mm. so like headless chicken you're running around other roles other people mm. because the whole idea seems to be so so to say whether you are at university or school still the melody is the same that is this is a social convention that it will lead to less frustration less boredom and uh, less suffering but this is not the case no, <laughs> not the case rich people can be very very frustrated huh? and have very very mental problems and also can be very very lonely <laughs> huh? huh very lonely money huh? can huh? cannot take away loneliness but no, 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 because no. it's a mental thing yeah right so how to tell this world of society right that the fix is not what you all are doing but it's a case of seeing it for what it is and being mindful with it so you overcome loneliness through mindfulness mm. where you occupy your mind with the dhamma mm. Mm. and nothing else mm. right so you occupy your boredom by being in the dhamma and not choosing and and creating for the craving and no. uh, yeah it's the best company one can have huh so true but uh, they... that's why i i think solitude i mean solitude from people in general is 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 not something one should fear because one one gets a much better chance to be with the dhamma right huh and then one is with something that is really valuable and then what actually realistically creates a less suffering in one's future in one's own personal future and also in other beings whoever beings one come into contact with with the animal or deva or human being they will also suffer less if one have been with the dhamma right well, so right. It, it, it's a realistic uh, way and path and this i think uh, is something that is has stimulated and confirmed me many times over the years that it's a right thing to do right <laughs> it's the only right thing to only do only thing to do but <laughs> right. so, now because society bante has a further segregation of uh spirituality which is faith based beliefs yeah some of the people who are already in these faith based beliefs has some spiritual association that overcomes some of the problems for them hmm some of their lonelinesses hmm. some of their boredom is taken away because they are involved in social programming uh and you know being generous with what they have gathered sharing with those people so there are as an element where the social structure the spiritual faith belief structures does fix some of the things that are there mm mm but it doesn't fix it all no <laughs> right so now uh for the moment the society where we live that is governed by some type of marketing yeah has not got any spiritual attachment with it because marketing doesn't want anybody 
limiting them. To reflect upon what they are buying. Oh, uh, they are uh, restricting consumerism in any possible way. So true. Yeah. Ethics models don't come into marketing. Uh, yeah. no, no. Ultimately, it is a soundbite. And if you can create temptation in another, mm. if you can create the craving in another, if you can create whatever to sell what you are. Emotion. It's so true, Mathieu. Yeah. Blackmail. Yeah. They, they'll do so. Mm. Yeah, there's no moral associated. There's no mm. ethics associated with it. Mm, mm, yeah. mm. By these words, I think we say thank you for today and thank you indeed to Bente Damagavesi. Bente Damagavesi is now going to uh, Australia and will take up his uh, three months VAS retreat there, I guess. Yes. Uh, this is we do every year. We take three months where we're not traveling so much around and to do meditation uh, an intense period. They're usually very, very rewarding. And uh, so I think we have done these two thoughts and they will come. I think probably as six uh, YouTube videos where we cover a lot of ground. But in this day, I think it was a good thing to go over the core of all Buddhism, the Four Noble Truths, and thereby also the Fourth Truth, the Noble Eightfold Way. And then I'd like to say thank you. Namo, Tasso, Bhagavato, Arahato, Samma Sambuddhasa, worthy, honorable, and perfectly self-enlightened, was the bliss Buddha. And thank you indeed for your advantageous attention, for your clever consideration, and for your kind contribution. And have indeed a nice and noble day, and have indeed a nice and noble life. Thank you, Sadhu. Friends, the Four Noble Truths, Tadzariya, Arya Satyani, which is the very core of Buddhism, are. 1. All this and such is suffering, dukkha. 2. Craving is the cause of suffering, dukkha samudaya. 3. Absence of all craving is the end of all suffering, dukkha niruddha. 4. The noble eightfold way leads to the end of suffering. Dukkha Niruddha Gamni Patibhada. This noble, hateful way, which leads to Nibbana, is simply this. Right you, Samaditi. Right motivation, Samma Sankappa. Right speech, Samma Vajja. Right action, Samma Kamanda, right livelihood, Samma Ajiva, right effort, Samma Vajama, right awareness, Samma Sati, and right concentration, Samma Samadhi. But what is right action, Samma Kamanda? What is this essential right action? Right action is threefold. 1. Avoiding all killing and any form of harming or violence towards any form of living being. 2. Abstaining from all taking and thus stealing whatever is not given. 3. Stopping all adultery and any sexual abuse of illegitimate partners. That is right action. On the characterization of right action, the Blessed Buddha said, Friends, it is caused by behavior in conflict with the Dhamma, caused by immoral behavior, that some beings here, right at the breakup of the body, right after death, reappear lost in states of pain, in unhappy destinations, in the downfall dimensions, even in the hills. And it is caused by good behavior, in harmony with the Dhamma, caused by good moral behavior, that some beings here, on the break off of the body, right after death, reappear 
in a happy destination, even in the divine world. And which are the three kinds of bodily, moral behavior that are in good harmony with the Dhamma? One, here one stops all killing of any living being, and one abstains from injuring any living being, with weapon and stick laid aside, gentle and kind, such good one dwells in harmless sympathy towards all beings. 2. Avoiding the taking of what is not given. One refrains from all stealing what is not openly given. One does not take by way of theft the wealth or property of others, neither in the village nor in the forest. 3. Abandoning abuse of sensual pleasures, one gives up misuse in sensual pleasures. One does not have sexual intercourse with partners who are protected by their mother, or father, or brother, or sister, or relatives, or partners who is married, or who is betrothed to another partner who are protected by law, who are underage, a minor, who are in prison, or who are engaged to other side. That is how there are three kinds of advantageous bodily moral behavior. That is in good and fine, sweet harmony with the true Dharma. Such fine behavior is right action. For further study on Buddhist right action, Samma Kamanda, go to whatbuddhasit.net and search for what is right action. Thank you for your attention, consideration,